The Devarn are one of the most important species in the star system universe. Everything from human technology to culture and even our government has changed because of this fallen species. So the question is, what place do the Devarn hold in the galaxy today? Welcome to Galactic Historian. This is a series where I break down the lore of sci-fi universes. If you enjoy these, please like the video and make sure to leave any questions or comments you have in the space below. Let's start by understanding how the Devarin came to be part of the UEE. It's important to note that the Devarin never wanted to become part of the human empire. In fact, they fought two wars against humanity in an attempt to separate themselves. The first was an attempt to expand their burgeoning empire. The defeat by humanity in that war sent the majority of the species into self-imposed exile. The second war was fought to regain their ancestral homeland. The fact that they are now part of the UEE and even actively fight for it shows the changes that have taken place over the last 500 years since they first encountered humanity. The Devarn originally were a martial species dedicated to honor, discipline, and purpose. Their guiding principle was that of Rijora, a religion similar to that of Earth Bushido. Their culture emphasized honor, discipline, strength, survival, and stealth, which meant they were skilled soldiers, masters of ambush attacks, and experts in infiltration. In fact, the modern Prowler is a remnant from this time. It was an armored transport for only the elite of the Devarn military, known as the Nuale, who had mastered all 343 fighting stances of the Rijora. The Prowler served in both the First and Second Tavarin Wars. It was used as a stealth dropship to infiltrate UEE ships and stations with terrifying effectiveness. They pioneered new shield tech, which has become the gold standard for the rest of the universe. They were the first to create air shields, force fields that kept pressure and atmosphere inside a ship, but allowed people or objects to pass through. This technology has become standard issue on all UEE capital ships and stations, reverse engineered by humanity after their first encounters with the Tavarin. They also developed the renowned Phalanx Shield, a type of energy shield that would interweave its power with other ships of the same tech. Given enough sources, this shield was almost indestructible by conventional means. Versions of this tech still exist today, which reside in most of the Banu ships and the lovingly recreated Tavarin Prowler by Asperia. In fact, some of this technology was still a mystery up until very recently. The modern Prowler, for instance, was only possible because of the discovery of a cache of original Tavarin weapons and tech in the system of Cabal. This system had remained hidden, even to its own people, since the end of the First Tavarin War. The engineers at Asperia carefully disassembled the original prowlers found on the system and reverse engineered the design while bringing it up to modern standards. They learned a lot about Tavarin weapons, shields, and stealth technology from this experience. Like their technology, Mijora, and most Tavarin culture, has become a distant memory to most Tavarin. Since their back-to-back -back losses in two wars with humanity, much of the old ways of the Tavarin were either lost or intentionally abandoned in what was known as the Purge, when the followers of Rijora intentionally destroyed the records of traditional Tavarin culture and technology, believing either that Rijora had failed the Tavarin or the Tavarin had failed the Rijora. Still, despite the loss of most of their identity, survival and warfare remain core tenets in the lives of most Tavarin. This is because they were banished from their homeworld by the Mezers and lived as refugees in unclaimed space for almost two centuries. As a result, they would live where they could and take any jobs to keep themselves from starving, leading to a rough culture of mercenaries and outlaws doing anything and everything they could to survive, often with the aid of a good gun. They were only allowed to return after the last Mezer was dethroned in 2792. A few returned to their ancestral homeworld of Jalan, and those that did may have done so more out of desperation than reverence for their past. As a result, it should not come as a surprise that most Tavarin do not actually live in the UEE. 
They're outlaws, rebels, pirates, criminals, and outcasts still living in the fringes of society or in unclaimed systems like their ancestors did after the fall of the Tavaran sovereignty at the end of the First Tavaran War. After the reincorporation of the Tavaran into the UEE, many felt lost and didn't bother settling down on Jalan or any UEE world. Without an identity or any guiding principles, they wandered the UEE. For one reason or another, many Tavaran were drawn to the desolate, hostile, and nearly inhospitable world of Brana II, a failed world which the UEE had decided was not worth the trouble to claim. Likely because of its isolation and undesirable status by humanity, Tavaran started to settle this world. It remains the largest concentration of Tavaran outside the UEE, a world where many Tavaran seek to carve out a new path for their people, one away from the influences of the UEE. The Tavaran who remain in the UEE today are a lost people, prone to violence and crime. They have been raised to reject their old traditions, but have not embraced the cultures of humanity. They are outnumbered by humans in the UEE and are the least populated spacefaring species in the galaxy, meaning that many may not even know a Tavaran outside their immediate family. However, there is one place where you're most likely to find a Tavaran in great numbers inside the UEE, the military. Many Tavaran serve in the UEE military, but the vast majority were given an ultimatum of prison or service. These soldiers serve in special units with other criminals pressed into the military, and in many cases are no better off than their fellow Tavaran in prison. However, they are not the only Tavaran soldiers in the UEE ranks. Many Tavaran in the UEE have begun a movement to try to blend their traditional culture into the fabric of the UEE. This has been spearheaded by retired Tavaran soldiers who have been using their citizenship status to promote Tavaran causes. One in particular, a retired Navy pilot and veteran of the Vanduul conflict named Suj Kosi, recently won a seat in the UEE Senate from the Tavaran homeworld of Elysium IV, what the Tavaran call Jalan. Senator Kosi has proposed a new way forward for the Tavaran. His goal is to increase Tavaran participation in the UEE, specifically by getting native Tavaran of Jalan to enlist in the military. By integrating them into human units, these Tavaran will show their comrades in arms that they also have what it takes to defend the Empire and earn humanity's respect. Finally, by enlisting instead of being forced to enlist, all of the Tavaran who leave the service will be guaranteed citizenship. This means they will have a greater voice in the affairs of the UEE government, thus closing the gap between the Tavaran and humanity in terms of understanding and power. So, that's where the Tavaran are today. Those that live inside the UEE are attempting to integrate with their former conquerors by earning their citizenship to influence the politics of the government. Those who live outside the UEE are drawn to dangerous professions and hostile worlds, with the largest group being concentrated on a nearly dead world, but focused on building a new culture free of human influence. These two sides seem destined to clash going forward, both holding the future of the species in their hands. It may be up to pilots and citizens like you to help determine which side is the ultimate victor and maybe even decide the survival of the Tavaran as a whole. Thanks for watching, and I want to thank my Patreons who are on the screen now for helping me make this content. If you want to help us out, even $5 a month will help bring these videos to life. I hope you enjoyed the video. Which side do you favor? Do you think the Tavaran are on the rise once more or destined to fall into the ash heaps of history? Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, remember, ex historia ad astra.